I've been working on my mitten and I got to the point where we are at this line where we need to set these stitches aside in order to attach the thumb. Let me show you how that works. So when you look at this, this looks completely seamless, but what we actually did was set these stitches aside on a pin and then came back and stitched the thumb on. So we'll have a little, a little hole there for a while and then as we continue to make the rest of the mitten. So that's what I wanna show you how to do. And on a pattern like this, you will see a point when there is a line that says, here is where you're gonna set these stitches aside. And we're at that point now. I just finished that row. So what we're gonna do is take the stitches that are the thumb stitches, which are these. I have them all on one needle now since I increased to a point where it made sense to do that. And I'm gonna use this large safety pin and put these stitches onto the safety pin. I have those on the safety pin and they're gonna stay there for a while. And now we're going to keep heading around. We're gonna use this needle again here in a minute, but we're going to keep going on with the pattern. So I'm gonna move my tape up and we're gonna continue with the next row, just as we would if we hadn't set that thumb aside. And then I'm gonna show you exactly what we're going to do to kind of bridge that gap. Okay, so we're now to the point where we need to bridge the gap where this thumb is. So right now we have three needles and then this safety pin. So we wanna add a fourth needle here. And it's gonna help if I mark where that starts. We are going to cast on stitches in this pattern. To do this kind of casting on, this is actually easier than the first kind, but it's not as stable, but it's good for the thumb. So what you do is you Put the yarn on your fingers like this, your finger and your thumb, to make kind of a triangle. And then turn it to make an X. Then you're gonna take the needle, put it on top of the X, the bottom of the X, and then up and through the top. And then pull it tight. And then you repeat that to make a second one. We're actually going to start with the gold yarn. So we'll get that ready, make our X, and we're gonna cast on one, two, three, four gold. So I'm gonna keep following this pattern, four gold, then we'll do five white, One gold, two white, gold, two white, gold, and then three white. So when you look at this, you should see the pattern of this row. And then we are going to continue knitting. So this becomes the first row that we knit on top of that thumb hole. So let's mark this off, move it up. And then we're gonna knit the next row. 
And this is a pattern, this is what you would do no matter what pattern you're using. If you are making a mitten with a thumb, thumb hole, this is how you would do it. I'm sure that there are other ways. There seem to be a lot of different ways to do different things. But this is the way I learned to make a thumb hole for a mitten. We've gotten to this needle now where we need to stitch into what we just cast on. And this is where it's like a little loose and wiggly because of the kind of stitch that, or the kind of cast on method that we used. But we're just going to continue to follow the pattern. And as we add rows of knitting, it's going to start to tighten up. Somehow I missed one stitch. I'm not sure what happened. Probably when I was casting on, I missed one that was right in here, right in the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is just add a stitch from in here. Sometimes I do go back and unravel, but I first try to problem solve and see if there's a way that I can make it work without having to go back and unravel it. So I think I'll be able to pull a piece from here. If I can get, I've got a lot of needles in this one little area right now between the needles and the safety pin. And... Okay, there we go, problem solved. And what you'll see is once you knit that row, it starts to stabilize and it becomes more stable with the next row that you add on. And now we're just going to continue with the pattern. So I will mark that row as done. And what I do want to look for is, is the pattern lining up? And it definitely is here. And I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on it here to make sure that wherever that stitch was dropped that I kind of account for that with the pattern. I don't, it may have been on the end also, but anyway, we'll see, we'll see how that works out, but I'll just keep an eye on the pattern and make sure that it makes sense. Yep, so that pattern worked out, so we're good to go. This part might curl up a little bit, but we're going to fix that when we attach the thumb. So don't worry about what this looks like. It ends up looking pretty good. Sometimes the thumb pattern lines up really nicely and other times it doesn't. I've learned, I think it depends a lot on the pattern that you're doing. The top of this thumb pattern is cut off, but I have another copy and I'm gonna we'll work through that. But this pattern doesn't actually line up with the pattern that's on the back of the mitten or the front of the mitten, I guess. So we don't need to worry about anything lining up there. I'm going to knit all the way up till we get to this row when we start doing the decreases. And this is to make the shape of the mitten that will fit your fingers. And that's pretty simple, but I do wanna show how to do it for those who aren't as familiar with decreasing or wanna see just my method of doing it. And, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and knit all of these rows because that's just straight knitting following the pattern. And then in the next video, I will show how to decrease and also show how to uh, make the thumb.